It was a cold and dreary day in Paris. XTRG, the Minister of the Admiralty, was walking to his office as usual on the cobblestone road out front when someone came up to him and asked for the time. XTRG pulled out his pocket watch, a famous watch that had been the headline story throughout all of France on multiple occasions. It had been passed down between five generations. More than a hundred years ago, it was first used by one of the earliest admiralties in the French Navy. And now XTRG proudly wore the watch. Everybody knew that that was the admiral. That was the head of the French Navy. And when he took it out, the bystander knew. He knew it was his mark. He knew it was his target. XTRG, none the wiser, provided the time and cheerfully walked on his way. When suddenly, three sharp gunshots rang out from just feet behind him. XTRG fell to the ground, rolled to his stomach, and looked up. Miraculously, three shots had been fired by the assailant, and not one had struck home. Now, XTRG, as he looked up, was faced with a pistol right in his face. He muttered, why? What must he do? The assailant calmly told him, you've wasted my taxpayer money enough. You start battleships and then you scrap them months after starting them. You are no patriot. You are a German traitor. And with that, XTRG began to mumble a word of, of, well, no one would know what he was mumbling, probably begging for his life or something. But before anything could come out, a shot rang out at point-blank range, and a thirty-three caliber weapon, thirty-three caliber bullet, smashed into XTRG's face. He died instantly. The assailant put the firearm back in his holster and walked off as if nothing had happened. Two hours later, he would be caught and eventually executed. But the damage was done. The leader of the French Navy for the past six years was dead. A French Navy that, somewhat directionless, was still able to beat Austria-Hungary in a somewhat contentious conflict. After taking over from Tortuga power, XTRG had put his stamp on the French Navy, although it wasn't necessarily a popular stamp. Very inconsistent building policies, an inadequate navy, the majority of the battleships left over from Tortuga Power's heralded administration. XTRG's fleet counted just four battleships with one in dry dock, two battle cruisers with two under construction. Less than half the battleships of Germany, who France had beaten in a war just years ago under Tortuga Power, only on par with Austria-Hungary, almost a quarter of the fleet of Great Britain, still inferior to the Italian Navy, who France had beaten under the illustrious historical gamer just a few decades ago, weaker still than the Empire of Japan in the Pacific. France's Navy had fallen far. Cruisers were about the only only area she was doing okay, light cruisers specifically. And after the recent victory over Austria-Hungary, XTRG scrapped the pride of the French Navy, the historical gamer class, the finest of the pre-dreadnoughts, as well as several other ships. Only six pre-dreadnoughts remained, only two or only four battleships and only two battle cruisers. France is anything but ready for a war. And yet despite this, Italy has been marking its time and attempting to build its fleet up so that it might strike for revenge to regain the lost colony of Sardinia, which France took from it. Even Tortuga Power had a successful reign, taking two African colonies from Germany. XTRG's one war ended in a white peace. Austria was reportedly willing to grant grave concessions, and yet nothing came of it. After all, Austria had no colonies, no contiguous landmass with France, and a fleet unworthy of taking any vessels into the French Navy. And so Tortuga and the historical gamer Both well-regarded leaders, XTRG on the other hand, well, he was going to meet his maker. And in the chaos that followed, the French government assigned a new First Sea Lord. 
none other than the historical gamer's own son, Historical Junior. Historical Junior was a surprisingly young first sea lord, just 31 years of age. His father, who had passed away some 12 years ago, was young himself. And yet, he was wise in the ways of the world. He had served in the French Navy for some 13 years and recently moved into the administration, perhaps wishing to call back memories of a time when France ruled the Mediterranean. Perhaps a rash decision. Whatever it was, the historical gamer Jr. is now in charge. Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and that's my horrible attempt at a narrative to try and introduce you to the uh, world as France. As I mentioned, uh, I'm taking over from XTRG. That was not a shot at him, I just had to find an excuse for him to die, so I kind of had to portray him as being a poor uh, sea lord. Uh, and obviously playing as myself in this second round of the succession rule the wave uh, live, you know, live play, I guess we're live streaming it, um... You know, I had to find some reason for me to be back in charge. XTRG, XTRG did whip Austria in a war that recently ended. Uh, he didn't lose, I don't know if he lost any ships, but Austria lost pretty heavily, including a ba two battle cruisers in a war against XTRG. Uh, additionally, it uh, looks like they lost a heavy cruiser when, I'm, when I was in charge, um, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but they lost several warships and uh, were soundly beaten. Additionally, since the last time I played, uh, Tortuga f played from 1906 to 1912, and he fought a war against Germany and uh, badly trounced, trounced them. Um, it looks like we did lose a Dunkirk-class battlecruiser under XTRG's leadership. This is a weird design with all forward-facing ships, uh, or all forward-facing guns, uh, some 10, 12-inch guns with nothing in the rear. So, you know, if the French are trying to run away, as they usually do, there's no way to return fire. Um, and it looks like they, that was about it. Uh, he lost a couple of destroyers as well, uh, but nonetheless... Despite, despite two battlecruiser losses, he certainly won that war against Austria-Hungary. Um, I'm going to update the playlist to make sure that all of his videos are in here. If you've missed any of them, please feel free to check it out. Uh, right now, this, this video is going to be more trying to figure out, okay, you know, where does the fleet stand? Uh, I mentioned that the fleet is a little bit undersized, in my opinion. We only have four battleships. It shows one building, but that's really just in the middle of a refit. It's the Devastation class that was built by uh, Tortuga, I believe. Uh, you can see here, they're a pretty fine class. They're 10, 15-inch guns, uh, very heavily armored. I'm not a fan of these midship uh, batteries. I'd rather have super-firing batteries, but I believe that was before uh, the technology was developed. So this is really the core of our battle fleet, is four of these Devastation class uh, battleships. Uh, in addition to that, we have the Richelieu class uh, battle cruiser, uh, which you can see here has a quad turret in the middle and two, uh, three uh battery guns fore and aft, so that only is three center-firing turrets for 10 16-inch guns. I believe that was one of XTRG's designs, 36,000 tons. And then we have an interesting, uh, not a huge fan of it, uh, battlecruiser class, the Marseille class. It's got a four turret up front and then two single turrets in the rear, all 12 inches. Uh, only 15,000 tons, but it makes 30 knots, so this thing is basically a super fast, moderately heavy armored ship, almost like the Repulse class. Uh, or the Renown class, whichever that was, of the British Navy, uh, which only had six main guns. This has them as well, but I'm not a fan of the heavy forward armament, as it, uh, as it seems XTRG was a fan of. Uh, we've got the Richelieu class battlecruisers. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, and then we've got a couple of Cosmo class light cruisers that are under construction. Uh, 13 7-inch guns. Not the most rapid-firing light cruisers, but certainly they have a heavy weight of firepower with minimal armor and 28 knots, so they make good speed. Those are the first cruisers, I believe, that have been laid down since my reign as France's head. You can see here, neither Tortuga or XTRG did much in the way of cruiser development until recently, and you can see all of our cruisers are listed as being obsolete. We have a horribly obsolete fleet right now. We've got a lot of destroyers and minesweepers. Uh, looks like XTRG was working on a Bastille class, uh, 1,100 tons, 31 knots, four torpedo tubes, and six 5-inch guns. So a very well-armored uh, destroyer. I'd like a few more torpedo tubes on there. Uh, and then he's also built the Durandal class destroyer with four torpedo tubes and two 4-inch guns uh, as well. Um, other than that, the rest of those destroyers are ours. The minesweepers are from the reign of Tortuga Power, which are kind of 
they're meant more for auxiliary work. They've got two three-inch guns. His thought process was that he can use them to fight off enemy destroyers back before destroyers started getting really big. Uh, they're pretty much obsolete now for anything but coastal patrols. Uh, but they're cheap, so we can keep them around doing that. Um, our cruisers are what we had when we left. Again, I mentioned we've got the Sardinia class, eight six-inch guns. It might be obsolete, but with a few upgrades, to be honest, these are still very serviceable ships. They're a little bit slow. That's their main weakness. Uh, but if coupled with some slower battleships, they may provide some value to a battle fleet. And then we've got the Lavasur class, which is very similar to the Sardinia class. A little bit smaller, a little bit cheaper, eight six-inch guns, just the same, 23 knots, just the same slightly different armor layout. In addition to that, we've got the original Cephex class, uh, which are pretty obsolete at this point with only 12 4-inch guns and 3,100 tons. They only make 21 knots. We'll probably be scrapping those. You can see all of these ships are in the active fleet, uh, which probably will need to be adjusted. Um, and then we've got the Latouk Treville class heavy cruisers. Uh, this was my design, four 8-inch guns, 12 6-inch guns, and 22 knots. Probably still serviceable for a couple of years. We're in 1918, so that's definitely getting slow, uh, but it's it's you know fought in several wars, and it's been useful. It's very heavily armored as well, um, so anything but a battle cruiser, and it can pretty much either run away or stand up against. Even still, you, know, you can see here our battleships are pretty much not making above 20 knots. Uh, XTRG has kept a few battle cruisers, or sorry, pre-dreadnought battleships around. You can see the ocean class is still around with its felt, oh, can't speak, four 12-inch guns and 10-inch armor. He seems to have upgraded as well because it now can make 22 knots impressively. And then there are two historical gamer class ships left, four 12-inch guns, 12 10-inch guns, and they make 19 knots. Uh, I believe he's upgraded those recently. I think 1909, no, that was my reign, wasn't it? No, that's when they were finished. So these are the two newest of the historical gamer class. I'm not sure if they've been upgraded or not. Um, I need to take a little bit closer look. They're Leclerc or Le Cartel, or I can't even read that. And then Secret Bleu. Uh, but again, these are both the remnants of the class named after yours truly. Uh, he recently scrapped the other four, I think it was, uh, right after the war with Austria. Now, the one thing that I am very happy about and I'm appreciative is XTRG left me in a very good financial situation. I've got four and a half million dollars in the bank or sorry, four and a half million dollars per month in the bank and twenty one point four million in the bank. So we're in a good financial spot, unlike the situation I left XTRG when he was horribly in, in the red uh, and unlike the situation that Tortuga left XTRG or I left Tortuga, and Tortuga left XTRG, a mess of a financial situation where he was negative 11 million balance for a couple of months there. Um, so that was some uh, struggles that XTRG had to work through. Additionally, XTRG has put some resources behind submarines. So I had built, if you remember, I think five coastal submarines, just kind of, I think I was appeasing Congress or something. Uh, but he has actually built, I can't even do the math here, uh, well over 10, <laughs> so like 15, um, if we look, we have 23 subs and five of those are mine. So he built 18 submarines and these are all pretty modern subs. They're 1915 and 1916 full-fledged fleet subs. So uh, they're a little bit more expensive to maintain, but uh, they are decent with 67 reliability and modern designs and they're not coastal subs or anything like that. So in the event that we end up at war with Italy, we'll have something to strike back at them with. You can see tensions with Italy are pretty high and I've already kind of mentioned the fleet situation. We're about on par with them with battleships, uh, but unfortunately, their battle cruisers, they outnumber us four to one. And even though we're building two, they're building two as well. So um, that's a little bit concerning. If we look at their battleships, we do we have stolen their designs. They're not too terrifying. Their dreadnought battleships are inferior to our own. They're a little bit faster, which is concerning. They can run us down. But when it comes to a firefight, we've got what, 10, 15 inchers, and they've got six 13 inchers. So these are pretty weak battleships in terms of firepower, although their speed is strong. And they're all of one class, so that's all the same. Their battle cruisers are a little bit newer. They're 1911 designs. They also make 26 knots, which again, out outspeeds our battleships and is on par with our battle cruisers. However, again, they also are a little bit weak in terms of armament. They've only got six uh, main guns. And then they've got the Christopher... Colombo class, which is a nine gun ship, 12 inches again with 26 knots. So they've gone with weaker caliber guns, although this one's a little bit more dangerous. Instead of six guns, they've got nine on there. Nonetheless, in terms of a ship per ship setup, uh, they've got a few other battle cruisers, it looks like, but I don't know if we've stolen designs. Yeah, they've got 12 14 inches. 
and then another 12, 14 inches on these designs, uh, at least based on what Intel has told us. And we don't know anything about the Carlo Alberto. Nonetheless, everything that I can see on there, we've at least got bigger guns. And I think we also have a better armored deck as well, or just better armored ship altogether. At least our battleships, I believe that's the case. Our battle cruisers are, eh, I don't really like that battle cruiser. That's a crappy battle cruiser. Uh, but the Dunkirk, uh, which was designed by, or Dukanese, or however you pronounce that, uh, looks a little bit more heavily armored than uh, the ships that we'd have to be going against. So on the whole, um, you can see here, we're in a little bit of a rough shape. Uh, our, our fleet is a little bit small and a <laughs> more than a little bit obsolete. So what we're really going to need to do is we're going to need to focus on making France great again. And the way we're going to do that, I know we just scrapped a whole bunch of ships. I think we're going to refit these two heavy cruisers because they're pretty darn good ships. I think, I think they still have a, I think they still have value. They're slow, uh, but our whole fleet is slow right now with the devastations only making 19 knots, kind of surprising for a dreadnought to only make 19 knots. Um, so I think what we'll do here is we'll open up these. Well, actually we've got one more dip tours class, which only makes 21 knots. So I think I'm going to, she's in Southwest. Now, these are all on foreign stations, so we can't actually upgrade them at the moment. We'll have to bring them back, but we'll probably do that a little bit later. Um, I'm going to scrap the suffix class. This is just a garbage class of cruisers and there's really no value to having them. So we're going to go ahead and scrap those. That's five ships. That we'll go ahead and scrap, make a little bit of money, but in general, just kind of get them off our books. Um, the true class is on foreign station and it's decent. It's slow, but it's decent. Um, man, this is just, this is tricky. Uh, the brand Bills class destroyers should probably be scrapped as well. I can build new destroyers relatively cheaply. And I think that's what I'm going to do actually. Um, let's see here. The Ballasti class, 1100 tons, is a 1916 design. So that is actually two years old, but it's, it's good enough. And I don't want to spend money designing a new ship. I'm just going to build a few more of these. So I'm going to go ahead and build some, some of these. I just scrapped several destroyers. I can't remember how many I scrapped. I think it was like six or so. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build 10 new destroyers of this class. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build ship. We're going to use the existing uh, ship design. Although actually, wait a minute, the Escapidi class. Maybe this is one of those classes that people talked about that X2RG started building and then never actually finished. Uh, so let's take a look at that ship. Let's go into the ship design window. We'll go into the load design and not that. No. Where is it? I wish I could just click on the ship in the build ship window and then it would show up. What was it called again? Sorry guys, this is kind of embarrassing. Uh, the okay, so it was all right. Okay, so E. There she is. You can see this ship had six torpedo tubes, so actually much better. Six torpedo tubes uh, with some six five-inch guns. So the guns are adequate, the torpedo tubes are adequate, and she made 32 knots. That's a good design. I'm going to use that. So we're going to build some of those. Uh, even though XTRG did not build it, we are going to. And let's see how much we can do. It's going to be quite a bit of money to build a bunch of these. Um, it's going to take a year. So we'll build eight of them. I know that's a lot of money. It's the bulk of our own. Oh, it looks like he never even laid one of these down. Uh, so it's going to be eight destroyers here, 1,500 tons, 33 knots. Uh, hopefully those are going to be good ships. They'll be done in about a year. It does take up the majority of our budget, but we need some new good destroyers to replace the ones we just scrapped. In addition to that, we're building some light cruisers to replace the ones we just scrapped. The Cosimal class uh, looks like a promising French light cruiser class. So I'm not going to lay down any more light cruisers again, because we've got this, we, we've got four already on the way to replace the ones we just scrapped. And then we'll kind of cycle other ships out. We've still got several obsolete ships in the Navy, but we're going to have to deal with that for a while. Uh, meanwhile, the next step is going to be to, I think we need to bring some of these battleships back. So the two ocean classes that are in Northern Europe, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move them to mothballs. They might still provide some value. They are 22 knots, so they are fast. 
and they've got some big guns. They could provide value in a, in a war, but we're going to mothball them now to save some money. Uh, we can always bring them back in the case of a war. It takes some time to get their crews back up to speed, but we can always bring them back if we have to. Uh, the historical gamer class is in the Mediterranean. Uh, they're a little bit slow for my taste. They're also expensive. I don't want to scrap them because I'm a vain person, but I am going to mothball them as well. Uh, we can do that because the Mediterranean is, is a home province for France, so even though they're not in northern Europe, we can mothball them. We can't mothball the ocean classes in the western Pacific, or South Pacific and Western Africa, because those are not home provinces for us. Um, I don't know what the difference between FS and AF is. I'm going to move this to AF, though. It doesn't look like there's a difference in terms of cost. And by mothballing those four battleships, it saved us quite a bit of money. We're back over $3.2 million, uh, $3 million uh, bonus uh, per, per turn. We've also got some ships that are going to be done with refits. So we've got the Marseille, or sorry, the Torville class battle cruisers, the one I didn't like, and then the, the Devastation class battleship that's coming up. So we'll actually have about another three and a half million in free money in just a few turns, or in, in a single turn. So that's actually what I'm going to do first, is I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead one turn. I know we're almost to war with Italy, but if I have to, I'll take a prestige hit. Um, it does look like we actually need more tonnage on foreign stations, so that's probably what that other ship was doing. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put the ocean on foreign station. That'll satisfy our tonnage on foreign station. I, I'm not quite sure what, what the difference is. Maybe foreign station impacts crew quality, or maybe it means they're out sailing and showing the flag. I'm not really sure. Uh, let's take a real quick look at research. You can see here that we've uh, got high priority on guns, uh, on sonar, and on uh, rangefinder, hull, armor, machinery development, low priority on uh, subdivision and damage control. That's interesting. I'm always a big proponent of damage control. I'm kind of a, a, terpit, a terpitzian uh, admiral, so I'm actually going to lower or actually heighten the importance of uh, damage control. And on... Um, hmm... What do I want to drop the importance on? I wouldn't say sonar. Sonar is going to be important with submarines. But we'll drop naval guns to medium because we've already got, if we look at the research here, they're negative one quality, but we've got 16-inch guns. We've got zero quality 15-inch guns, which I think is going to be my standard for the fleet. So we've got decent guns. I think they're good enough for now. You don't really see 16-inch guns becoming prevalent for a couple more years, at least historically speaking. And let's see what else we can drop the importance of. We're going to drop the range find fire control a little bit just because... You know, we've already got level 16 there. We've definitely got a competitive advantage. And the last thing we did was a 15-inch or 15-foot range finders. So we've already got some quite a bit of improvements there. We're not going to drop it totally. We're just going to drop it to medium uh, to allow these other areas to have a little bit higher priority. Uh, explosive shells are at medium. Let's see, is there anything we want to drop to low? Um, maybe we also drop efficient hull form. Uh, just a medium, again, uh, just to try and give these other areas some uh, limelight. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. Now, where are we with oil firing? We don't have access to oil, and so that's a little bit of a, a bummer because we are getting into 1918, and we'd really like to be able to build ships that require oil. Uh, I don't know if we've researched it yet. Let's take a look. Um... I'm not quite sure what section oil shows up under. Hmm. Machinery, probably? Yeah, we do have oil firing. We just don't have access to oil. None of our colonies have oil. Um, should we build oil firing ships anyway? Just going to take a look here. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I won't do it. I guess we'll stick with coal for now. It's not what I'd like, but it's what we'll do. Um, let me... What are we going to do? Let's go one turn and just see what happens. So you can see our battleship and battle cruiser finished their reconstruction. Uh, we made a research breakthrough to triple bottom, which is nice. Uh, and then some other stuff. 
which I'm not really interested in. No changes to our tensions with Italy, which is good. We've got five and a half million dollars of money, and I think the answer now is our battle cruiser, the Torville class is no, that's crappy. That's not the ship I was thinking of. Um, there is a good battle cruiser class in here. It's the Dunquesque class. It's a little bit old, but it's it's a good class. Thirty four thousand tons, nine. Uh, 15 inch guns. I'm happy with that. What I'm not happy with is the fact that our battleships are, we don't have enough of them and they're seven years old in terms of their design. So I'm okay with the cruisers we're building. I'm good with the destroyers we've got. There's no point in building heavy cruisers unless we get some sort of arms limitation treaty. Historically, the heavy cruiser came about because of the Washington Naval Treaty. So there's no real reason to jump in with both feet to a, a, um, cruiser, uh, fleet. What we will do, however, is we will build a new battleship. And that's what I'm going to do right away because we've got a lot of money and we need more capital ships. And I'm a proponent of battleships over battle cruisers. Battle cruisers can act as the scouts again, but there's no real sense in using them as your mainline fleet. And frankly, as poor a commander as I am, I need to be able to take heavy damage. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to design a new ship. That's the wrong button. Okay. We're going to go to the battleship class uh, section. Now we can build ships up to 36,000 tons. So we're gonna just max the, the displacement. Actually, first we'll do an auto design. You can see the computer's designing a battleship up to 33,000 tons. We're gonna say that is inadequate, sir. We need to build a 36,000 ton ship, max out our design. Uh, I'm okay with spending some money because we've got some money available. Now, let's take a look. We're going to have 15-inch guns. I'm a, a big fan of 15-inch guns, especially with zero quality. I prefer them over the 16-inch, uh, even though I don't think... I think the 16-inch might actually be better. Uh, gun data, you can see at 25,000 yards, it goes 10.6. Uh, the 15-inch guns, 25,000 yards, 10.4. So slightly less penetration at range. However, um, I'm okay with that. Uh, because it's a better gun, and it saves us a little bit on weight. You can see here there's actually like 600 tons for three turrets that it saves us. And I'm going to make this a big, big ship in terms of what we're going to design. Now, I don't like these middle ship turrets. Not at all, especially when we have super firing turrets as an option. So I'm going to clear all turrets, and I'm going to go ahead and add a new turret. We're going to make it the Ford turret, and it's going to be a quadruple turret, because France has that technology developed. So four 15-inch guns in this turret up at the front. But that's not all. We're going to add another Ford turret. It's going to be superimposed, which means it's just slightly behind the first turret, and it's raised up above it so they can both fire at the same target forward. And it's going to be a triple turret as a superimposed turret. That looks ugly because now it's like right on top of the stack. That looks really ugly. Let's redesign this ship just from aesthetics per perspective. I don't really, I guess I don't really care how it looks because it has no real impact on the game. But anyway, so forward, I think it's going to do the same thing again. Forward superimpose. Yeah, goes right on top of that stack. Um, does deleting funnels actually do anything? I don't know. I don't really care. Um, update whatever. It's going to be an ugly ship, people. It's going to look like the conning tower is right on top of the actual turret, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to go with an aft quadruple turret as well. And then we're going to go with an aft super firing, super imposed triple turret. I don't know if we can really build a ship. This is going to be a heavy, heavy ship. I don't know if we're going to be able to actually build a ship like this. We'll see. I may have to make some adjustments to save some weight. But I love the idea of 14, 15-inch guns. This thing would just be a beast. Now, you can see here weight's going to be an issue. Um, so that may not be doable. We could probably drop... I don't want to make it a 14-inch gun either. Um, I think 100 rounds, in all honesty, is a little bit too much in terms of uh, these kind of rounds. The rate of fire on a 15-inch gun is slow enough, and the likelihood of an engagement lasting a full 100 rounds. Gun barrels traditionally started to lose their rifling at around 80 or 90 rounds in rapid succession. So we'll save a little bit of weight. You can see here 2,000 tons are being taken up by this, uh, this incredibly huge gun armament. So if we drop this down to 90, you'll see we save a bit of weight. We're down to 2,400 uh, we're going to struggle to build this design. I had really hoped we could build build this ship, but I don't think our ship design industry is, is far enough forward. 
You can see here, negative 2,000, and I don't want to make it super light either. Um, we could go with a battle cruiser with this armament. That would be impressive. Um, do we want to do that? Let's see here. Uh, I don't want 6-inch guns as our secondaries, though. I do want 5-inch guns, and we don't need 20 of them. We can have 16 of them, and we can put them in double turrets. So if we update that, you can see these guys here. Saves us quite a bit of weight, actually, down to 1,400 tons to put them in double turrets and make them 5-inchers. Uh, there's no tertiary batter. We're okay with that. Uh, they've got the mine defense of 2, uh, and then the speed of 22 knots. Yeah, it looks like we're probably going to have to drop these uh, down a bit. What if we drop this to, let's see here, we drop it down to a two-gun battery. So that saves us weight. So instead of it being a 18 or 14 gun ship, it'll be a 12 gun ship because I can do math. And you can see here we've got enough weight remaining. Now, the question is the belt armor sufficient. The deck armor three and a half is probably good, I think. The counting tower 14 inch is good. The turrets at 12, I'm good with. We could even bump that up a little bit. No, we can't really. Oh, well, I'm good with 12 inches. I think that's probably adequate. If we actually look at the gun data, it's got to be pretty close. Well, actually, 20,000 yards, you'll still penetrate 12 inches of armor. Damn. The deck armor is sufficient, though, because really anything outside of 20,000 yards, you're fine. anything inside of 20,000 yards, you're fine. Uh, okay. Um, that kind of makes me think that we need heavier armor. But that's going to come at the expense of firepower, right? And I'm I'm a big proponent of, of firepower. However, in this case, I think we may have to scale back our, our designs a little bit. Uh, I don't want to, but I think I may have to do that. So if we decrease this by two more guns, it'll be a 10-gun broadside, 15 inches. Still pretty formidable. Um, and then we've got some weight remaining. We can bump the armor up to 13 inches on the turrets. 13 inches on a zero quality 15 inch gun uh, gives us protection out to 20,000 yards. Uh, so that's good. You have to start getting really close to have your armor penetrated. So I think we're pretty good there. Um, I wonder if I've got, let's see here, we've got 300 tons remaining, 22. We could go uh, with, I don't want to go a short range ship. We'll go with medium. If I had oil, if only I had oil. Let's see how much... Oh, it wouldn't save us that much weight. Um, we'll drop the... I don't want to... Let's see. What's the counting tower good out to? So at 15,000 yards, the counting tower is still a goner if it gets hit by this caliber shell. Maybe we drop it to 13.5? doesn't really save us enough weight to justify it, so I think we keep it at 14. Secondaries are a little bit heavy. We don't need 6 inches of armor on the secondaries, so that'll actually save us some weight. So if we drop the secondaries down to 4... Well, even 3... We'll say four inches of armor. Uh, if they take a hit from a main caliber shell, they're a goner anyway. Um, and then that gives us a little bit more weight back. It gives us 600 tons back. Does it allow us to add a gun? Almost. So if we drop the main gun ammo, I'm just trying to figure out, maybe we only have three, three, that gives us 12. We only have 12 5 inch guns, 6 on each side. We've got a bit of weight. We can add that third gun back. What's adding a gun to the aft turret do? How much weight is that? That's like 600 tons. Holy crap. So we can have a 11 gun warship with pretty good armor, decent speed. Um, the secondary battery is definitely lacking. I'm wondering if. Let's see. Hmm. What do you guys think? Is the extra gun worth it, or should we just stick it out with uh, the, the number of guns we have here? 10, 15 inches. I'll leave it up to you guys. The coal isn't actually that heavy, though. If you look at the difference, it's only like 100 tons. So it's not that much in weight. I suppose we could reduce the secondaries to three. 
that probably gives us triple. Yeah, so we've got triple in front in both of these. I'd like another triple in back, but I don't know where I'm going to save the 600 tons unless I sacrifice on armor, and I really don't want to do that. A narrow belt also would be a bad idea, I think. Um, I think it would lead me to getting blown up. Um, do we want a slope deck or a flat deck? Does anybody know what's better, flat deck on top of belt or slope deck? Protected cruiser is a horrible idea. Saves us a bunch of weight, but it's a horrible idea. Slope deck is, well, that's probably a better idea, actually, right? Flat deck is probably more prone to losing out to plunging fire. Really? Okay. Flat deck is better, then, so that's good. Um, I don't know. I mean, in a fleet battle, I guess it depends on how long the engagement goes, right? 90 rounds of gun is actually quite a bit of ammo in terms of historical battles. Maybe not in this game, but it is. I just wish we had bigger shipyards, right, guys? I guess what we'll do is we'll cut the... Well, maybe... Cut the belt to 12 and a half. Saves us the weight. Maybe 12. No, doesn't save as much. Huh. So I can't build the ship I want to build, right? Man, that's frustrating. Um... I mean, I could completely eliminate our secondary guns, just have two of them. But I think that's a bad idea. That'll make us kind of vulnerable to torpedo attack. Maybe what we do is make them four-inch guns. Can we do 12? Six and six on each? What the hell? Why'd they disappear? Does it not show four-inch caliber guns? That's interesting. Anyway, so 14 four-inchers apparently doesn't show on the map. That looks weird. Um, we need to find 300 tons to save. Hopefully without making us too vulnerable. I, I'm a little bit worried. I think that makes us a little bit light. But, I don't want to make us slow either. 22 knots, we need to maintain the fleet. We go with cramped accommodations, but that's a bad idea also. Um, maybe we just do 12, 3 and 3 on each side. All right, guys, what do you guys think about this? A 12-inch belt armor is a little bit light, in my opinion. You can see here it makes us susceptible out to 20,000 yards. Um, but it does allow us to have the 12 15-inchers. So certainly is kind of a trade-off for firepower. 12 4-inch guns are hopefully sufficient to deal with destroyers. Uh, there's 6 on each side and 3 turrets. Uh, the secondary turrets, what if we go 12 and a half? Well, if we only go an inch armor on, or two inches of armor. Huh. I mean, we could go with three inch deck armor, but I'm worried that plunging fire will be too big of a risk. I'm going to go with eight secondaries. Maybe we put them in single turrets. Does that make them heavier? So they're a little bit less vulnerable. We've got eight single turrets, four caliber guns. It puts out a little bit of fire against a destroyer, but we're still pretty vulnerable, I think. Um, 12 and a half inch belt, 13 inch conning tower, 12 and a half turrets. I think this is what I'm going to finish up, guys. Let's see what you guys think. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, well, I think this is going to be our ship. I know you guys are talking about dropping the secondaries, but frankly... You know, you can never guarantee you're going to have sufficient cruisers, and I had bad experiences with my with my battleships getting caught way too close to destroyers. This isn't enough probably to drive a destroyer off, but maybe to at least keep them busy so they can't aim straight, even though I don't think that's part of the game. Um, we're going to call this class... What should we call this class? Um, the Sulfrino is what the default name is. I'm just trying to think. Is there something that I would prefer to change it to? Uh, hmm. We're going to call it the Tortuga Power in honor of the great Tortuga who won 
uh, African colonies from Germany and allowed us to gain revanche uh, from the Germans and to avenge the humiliating defeat uh, that we suffered at the hands of the Germans in, uh, and wait a minute, there's a suffering class from three years ago? What the heck? There's all these classes that haven't been used. Anyway, but uh, in honor of the great uh, and late Tortuga. I assume he's dead by now. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to build two of them. It's going to cost us $8 million to turn. We don't have quite that much money, but I'm hoping some money will free up and we've got a little bit in the bank where we can build two at a time. First class ship, $7 million. So there you go. We've got you know quite a few months of time. These are going to co- almost take two and a half years or exactly two and a half years, uh, but we'll have some ships coming off the off the ways here shortly within uh, the time, hopefully, that we before we run out of money. So we've got two battleships on the way. You can see here that gives us four battleships complete, two on the way. Uh, that puts us at parity, actually on pace to be superior to Italy, although, again, with their battle cruisers, we're still behind. Um, it puts us, well, in more reasonable shape, not in great shape. Also, it looks like we've got a treaty with Germany, so someone got us an alliance with Germany or something or other. Uh, but there you go. So that's the state of the fleet right now through the first two months of the game. All right, guys. Well, it's been about 40 minutes into this stream, so I'm actually going to go ahead and cut this video in half. Uh, so again, we have gotten off to a, to a new start as the Historical Gamer the second or the Historical Gamer Jr. Uh, running France, working on getting our capital ship allocations uh, turned around. Nothing here should be taken as any sort of shot against XTRG. It's all just for the sake of kind of gaming it up and playing it up and creating sort of a, a story and a mythology behind it. But I hope you guys enjoy the beginning of uh, my return to France in this uh, Rule the Waves Succession live stream. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the chat. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.